taken worldwide. However, uh, while performing endoscopic spine surgery, we should always keep in mind what is the ultimate goal of endoscopic spine surgery. As we can see in these pictures, it seems that the ultimate purpose of endoscopic spine surgery is to effectively treat the symptomatic pathology that causes symptoms while preserving the functional segment structures sufficiently. Endoscopic spine surgery um, has made a lot of progress over the years and it has undergone uh, transfrimal endoscopic lumbatisectomy and second generation of intrimal endoscopic lumbatisectomy and the third generation of endoscopic decompressive surgery and is now uh, entering the era of endoscopic fusion surgery. However, uh, it should be remembered that all this begins with the transfrimal endoscopic lumbatisectomy and it's also here as the, the ultimate rational uh, pursuit of, of endoscopic spine surgery located in transfrimal endoscopic lumbatisectomy. Historically, uh, transfrimal uh, endoscopic spine surgery can be said to be heavy originated in 1986 when private can be private can be triangle at here. However, a visualized endoscopic spine surgery capable of full endoscopic spine yeah. surgery began in 2000 when Anton Young introduced the inside the out uh, transfrontal endoscopic lumbatisectomy. In addition, when Thomas Hoogland introduced the outside in uh, transfrontal endoscopic lumbatisectomy in 2005, uh, transfrontal endoscopic uh, spine surgery made, made a lot of progression. And now, uh, through uh, this mobile outside in approach, uh, we can all lumbar symptomatic discs can be solved by endoscopic spine surgery. Now we the uh, surgical consideration. Can you hear my sound? Yes, we can. Yes. Can you hear yes, my yes, sound? Carry on. Yeah, yeah, we can, we hear you. Can you hear my sound? Yeah, yes. we hear you. We hear you. Kim, we hear you. Yes, sorry. Mm. Kim, carry on, we can hear you. Uh, sorry. The approach of the transform endoscopic lumbar system divided into inside the out uh, and outside in approach. Uh, inside out can be easily applied even by beginners, but uh, it is uh, a useful method. Oh, sorry. It is a useful method in limited indications because manipulation to the target point is not easy. On the other hand, the outside in approach has a, a learning curve, uh, but it is a method that can be applied in a wide range because working channel manipulation can be easily performed. Uh, the, the major obstacles of transfrontal endoscopic spine surgery such as high canal compromise and the high grade migration, but uh, these are all uh, bony structures. Now, with the development of endoscopic drills, most of them reserved. Uh, another thing to look out for uh, in the transfrontal endoscopic spine uh, so, uh, uh, approach is the transfrontal approach is that there are three different approach routes. Uh, there is an intervertebral route which we generally generally applied, and, and foramenal route that can be used effectively for paratral disc 
foraminal disc and the supramyelination disc. And there is a suprapedicular route that can be used effectively for paracentral and inferior migrate discs. Also, be aware that using the mobile outside in approach in the transfrontal approach allows we to approach the target point much more effectively. In the approach angle, it is recommended to ma uh, maintain the approach angle from this 25 to 30 degree to minimize the visceral injury and nerve root injury. After working channel is settled in the safety chemist triangle at here, uh, we can lower the angle to the target point. Also, if we choose the uh, disc type according to uh, expert grade, we can increase the success rate of the surgery. Now let's look at the cases of found in the transforaminal endoscopic lumbar disectomy. Here we can see the foraminal to superior migrated disc. Foraminal to superior migrated discs are often difficult in open surgery. However, in transforaminal endoscopic lumbar disectomy, if, the from, if we use the foraminal root, uh, is used, damage to the surrounding structures can be uh, minimized while resolving this problem like this. In the cases of a high kernel compromise, neural lit you can see here the high kernel compromise. In this case, the neural retraction is inevitable in open surgery. So neurological damage will inevitable, inevitably follows. However, a transformer approach, if it can possible, it can minimize such neurological damage and maximize the recovery of nerve damage without another structural damage you can see here. And in open surgery, as well as trans in transfrontal endoscopic spine surgery, uh, you can see here the highly inferior migrated. Highly inferior migrated discs has always been a difficult to solve challenges. However, the ad advancement of the surgical technology, such as suprapedicular circumferential opening um, technique, and the development of the instrument has made it possible to sufficiently solve with these problems you can see here. If a, a large, large fibrotal disc rupture, disc, if it happens, it is difficult to insert to the working channel uh, due to it they make a severe pain uh, during the insertion of the working channel. Because of that, it can be effectively we would do using floating technique like this. In the cases of recurrence after open lumbarsectomy, open surgery may lead to dural tears or neural damage due to adhesion. However, if we use the transformal lumbarsectomy, it can minimize this problem by using Virgin root in the independent of the existing love root like here. Uh, high lumbar uh, level HMP can cause nerve damage in open surgery, you can see here. So it is not easy to remove the uh, region effectively. However, if we use the transdermal endoscopic lumbar disectomy, uh, it can be minimized these problems you can see here. And until now, the transformer approach has not been easily to remove the regions up to uh, each deep site due to very accurate. However, uh, now as seen in these cases, uh, 
is the error uh, that can be effectively solved the full kernel, full kernel uh, pathology through a transformer approach. But let's look at the terminal endoscopic lumbosectomy. Currently, full endoscopy can be uh, approached for most or lumbar discs. A transformer approach is possible in almost uh, in all uh, any areas. Of course, transformer endoscopy approach is also possible in many cases of L5S1. But in the L5S1, transformer approach is also possible. Uh, Transformer approach has many limitations in accessing the target point when some degenerative changes have progressed. It may be difficult to reach the target point through transformer approach. Fortunately, the L5S1 level has a wide intraminal space, which leads to development of the intraminal endoscopic lumbosectomy. Fortunately, uh, since the ligament problem and uh, there over here, because that the ligament problem splitting and the endless ceiling, like this endless ceiling, on structure spacing in, in terminal approach, the structural preservation process that the transformer approaches to pursue have been have become possible. Since the intraminal endoscope lumbosectomy started with the ligament problem resection, we heard a talk about it uh, as similar to open surgery in the uh, early days. However, since uh, then, ligament problem splitting and annular ceiling technique have been introduced, and now a minimized option structural preservation process is possible, similar to the transformer endoscopic lumbar disectomy. In addition, uh, as the approach skill become familiar, the working channel can be directly accessed to the ligamentum problem uh, of the surgical field. So the actual surgical time requires can be significantly reduced. Uh, ligament problem splitting can target the uh, axilla uh, and the shoulder of the nerve root. Also, compared to the shoulder, axilla has a lot of advantages in the process. So it is recommended to split axilla as a target if possible. Uh, it is recommended to perform fissure from antoctin in order to sufficiently preserve the end loss in the process of removing the uh, protrude disc uh, you can see here. And also for already uh, made fissure, uh, annular ceiling can be performed by shrinkage around the fissure through radio frequency ablation. And finally, the surgery is over when we confirm the uh, nerve root that were uh, pressed are free. Let's look at the L5S interim and endoscopic lumbar disectomy cases. Uh, structural preservation uh, in terminal endoscopic. Sorry, video not play. Yes, a structural preservation in terminal endoscope lumbosectomy can be effectively performed even in severe disc protrusion, as in these cases. When uh, a bilateral disc pathology uh, uh, needed management is required, a ventral dural approach can be used to effectively resolve these bilateral lesions. If the pathology disc located in the, uh, on the shoulder area, it can be effectively solved by using the shoulder approach, you can see here. And also this case uh, showing the uh, recurrence uh, after uh, uh, intraminal endoscope lumbar disectomy. In these cases, we can also uh, solve the, this uh, problem through the existing fissure uh, you can see here.
5 is a final to superior migration uh, FTMP is a relatively difficult site for endoscopic disectomy and the use of uh, contractor and terminal approach you can see the contractor approach uh, we can effectively resolve these regions The intraminal approach seems difficult for recurrent uh, disc uh, generated after undergone open lumbar disectomy due to adhesion. But if we enter uh, between the bony structures and adhesion tissue after first approaching the bony landmark uh, lamina, the region can be resolved relatively easily, you can see. And now, Bisectomy now possible for almost all lumbar disc pathology, and uh, through this, more than 95% of good to excellent clinical results can obtain. Now let's talk about endoscopic decompression surgery. With the development of surgical instrument, endoscopic spine surgery, which remained in endoscopic disectomy, it became possible to uh, endoscopic decompression. And now most of the spine pathology requiring decompression by using this over the top outside an approach can be resolved through endoscopic spine surgery. The compared to the existing uh, open surgery, endoscopic uh, decompression surgery has uh, the advantage of uh, like this mobile and angled approach is possible uh, and access to deeper area can possible and a clear surgical field of view because it is a fluid based surgery. Based on these advantages, Endoscopic decompression surgery has become possible to increase the uh, normal life activity through sufficient neural decompression, preserve the functional segments, minimizing the para, uh, spinal muscle damage, and less neural retractive, which is decompressive spinal surgery has uh, thought. In order to effectively perform endoscopic decompression surgery, or uh, uh, a thick, larger endoscopic working portal is required and a more powerful drain system for hard tissue management and a more uh, a powerful radio frequency ablation system for soft tissue management is needed. The development of uh, this surgical instrument has enabled sufficient bilateral decompression through a uh, unilateral approach under the over, over the top outside in approach. In addition, addition to these advantages, a simple change in the working portal has enabled sufficient decompression from ipsilateral to contralateral, uh, uh, lateral recess foramen and extra foramen. These changes have made a leap uh, forward to significantly reduce post-operative instability as well as sufficient decompression, which was difficult part of existing open surgery and can operate to the contractor frame to extra frame. This leap uh, forward development of endoscopic decompressive surgery can be said to be the optimal treatment for the healthy age of 100 years, since it is possible to e effectively resolve region while minimizing uh, surgery-related complication even in severe spinal steps like this eight year old in the elderly like this patient you can see here. In addition, using intraminal contralateral endoscope lumbar uh, uh, disectomy and foraminotomy, it was possible to solve almost all regions requires spinal lobe decompression while minimizing inst instability, uh, thus obtaining uh, opportunity to minimize the spinal fusion surgery you can see here. In particular, uh, an increase in, in the number of elderly patients in 
inevitably accompanied by degenerative uh, de deformity accompanied by spinal stenosis. Even in these cases, the compressive surgery become possible while minimizing fusion surgery. You can see uh, this patient followed more than two years. Endoscopic decompressive surgery is now also applied to the thoracic spine like this thoracic decompression. And in particular, it is effectively used in the discal pathology that occupied most of the cervical uh, spine also can possible. Uh, and with this advancement of endoscopic spine surgery, the era of endoscopic fusion surgery is now possible. In conclusion, endoscopic spine surgery is now positioned as the mainstream of the spine spinal surgery, and a lot of research and education being conducted. But however, if endoscopic spine surgery truly wants to be the, uh, at the top of the spinal treatment, we should always keep in mind the ultimate purpose of the uh, pursuit of endoscopic spine surgery. In additionally, if we develop more advanced, advanced technology and minimize the inevitable complication in the endoscopic spine surgery, it should be possible to provide better treatment to the patient. Thank you for your kind attention. <coughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. I think it was an excellent presentation. Do we have any questions? I, have, I think there are two questions in the, uh, uh, in a the question chat section. In the chat, do you uh, have local anesthesia in and around the annulus, uh, Kim? From good to Everyone, uh, dear Dr. Kim, how can you scope with dural tears? Kim, can you hear me? Kim. Dr. Kim, do you hear us? I don't think he can hear us. Kim is not there? He's there, but he's uh, unable to listen to us, I think. Okay. I can. Yeah. Sorry, baby. I think Salman. the baby the oh. connection. Yeah. Salman. So the Yes, the question is, uh, do you infiltrate local anesthesia in and around the annulus? Uh, maybe before time, I'm also used the uh, local anesthesia for the transfrontal uh, endoscopic vasectomy, but uh, I don't use the uh, local anesthesia nowadays because uh, uh, the, uh, uh, sometimes the local anesthesia is of some give us some uh, nervous state to the patient and some uh, pain to the patient because of that. Uh, 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 nowadays, uh, I use the, some after uh, sedation anesthesia that is more uh, comfortable to the patient. But if you hope to uh, use the local anesthesia, some, uh, some local infiltration. In the into the transformer is uh, sufficient uh, to decreasing the pain, but uh, maybe uh, during annular penetration you make uh, some pain because of that. Uh, you should caution to the patient; they can de uh, decrease the uh, pain during the procedures. And what about CSF leak? Uh, what do you do with patients who develop leak? CSF leak is uh, some. 
uh, some uh, rare complication in the endoscope lumbar disectomy, but common complication in uh, endoscope decompression because of that uh, some approaches some different and dural open some different. But uh, anyway, uh, any kind of dural chair like a transformer and intramna and decompression, I'm already always used the. Uh, uh, a uh, patchy blocking technique. I already published that technique in World Neurosurgery. And uh, using the taco seal, uh, I applied to the dural uh, tear area and uh, blocking that point. And uh, that can, the uh, most important point is that uh, nerve, nerve incarceration during the dural tear. There is a mo most uh, uh, serious uh, Problem uh, uh, after on detection of the dural tear because of it, uh, you if you insert the uh, uh or taco uh, between the dural tear, it can preventing the incarceration of the nerve and it decreasing the uh, uh, after uh, 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 finishing the operation. Usually, the CSF leakage did not uh, happen. Salman, you uh, sound is muted. Sorry, uh, the another question is about the reoperation risk. What percentage of patients would require re-surgery? Uh, maybe reoperation meaning that uh, it's different in lumbar disectomy and lumbar decompression. But uh, uh, I always recommend that uh, some reoperation is very important because there is a recurrence. In the endoscope lumbar disectomy, recurrence is inevitable because it uh, related to the degeneration grade because of that. Uh, but anyway, there have a two, one, one another point of the recurrence is a biomechanical uh, loading because of that uh, decreasing the early ambulation and the ceiling and the, some uh, 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 decreasing the uh, making the lordosis, it can decrease the early recurrence. And my early recurrence rate of the endoscopic disectomy is less than 5%, less than five for every year. And uh, also reoperation cases of endoscope decompression is less than 1%. But uh, I'm always uh, recommend that the most important point is that decreasing the uh, reoperation in endoscope decompression is the uh, finishing the cranial detachment of the uh, ligament problem to the bony structure. That, that is the most important point. Okay. Uh, Mehmet, any more questions? Uh, there is one question from someone in the, in the chat. What is the success rate of paraspinal approach for aminal decompression and its complication rate? To me or to Professor Man? Not to you. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, yes, transplant and now there's so many uh, endoscopic spine surgeons, especially Chinese endoscopic spine surgeon, they uh, performing the transplant endoscopic decompression for lateral recess or central stenosis. But I don't know because I don't like that and I'm not trying uh, that process because I'm always uh, uh, thinking that the uh, uh, surgical techniques is always based on the uh, pathology rather than the uh, approach. Because of that, disc pathology is a disc, uh, disc protrusion, but uh, stenosis pathology is instability and thickening of the ligament problem. Because of that, uh, only imagine some focal point of the stenosis uh, pathology is not sufficient to the spinal stems. Because of that, I uh, like the central decompression rather than the paracentral or post, uh, you know, transprimal decompression. But in the paper, so many, uh, uh, others, they talk that uh, their success rate is very nice, more than 90%, but they show, should show that the long-term far result compared to the central endoscopic decompression. Or, and uh, I, I think that maybe it needs some uh, uh, comparative study to, with the central decompression with the same uh, indication. Okay. You don't like it. You, you don't yeah. do Yes. Am I right? Yeah, good. <laughs> um, th thank you a lot. Very, very nice uh, presentation and very detailed uh, 
information you have given us.